G'day Minecrafters and how you going? Steve-O here with another video and today I want to talk a little bit about shift registers and in particular One Direction shift registers. Now when I say One Direction, uh, for those One Direction fans out there, I do apologise I'm not talking about music. <laughs> uh, okay, that was a bad joke. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's move on. So I have three uh, buttons here or levers, three inputs. Um, the lever is to start the clock. Uh, the clock is pretty basic, just a, a torch uh, connected to a monostable circuit, and yeah, so that's the clock. This value here both connects to the clock, uh, sorry, the monostable circuit to send a pulse through the data, and it connects to the first line of the data stream. These lines back here are all uh, data, so we can, yeah, anyway, let's move on. Moving on, and the blue one is our reset. So we press this one to put a, a value into the uh, the shift register. So we see a nice you know value stored there, and to get it moving, we pull that lever, and we should see it continue to loop. Now the loop function I added afterwards, which is basically just the data stream from the last one connects into the first, um, and I'll show you that now. So we'll stop that one where it's at. It won't move. But that's just, yeah, this connecting to that. And I'll show you how to make these in just a moment. But first, let me show you the cool reset button, because it's snazzy. <laughs> Alright, so this design is made by a dude by the name of Crucial Craft. Now, Crucial Craft's um, design is linked in the Minecraft wiki. So, it's, it's reasonably good. It's one wide, and it works well. Yeah, this is it here. Now these things here, these black things, <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm not racist, <laughs> uh, they are D flip-flops. Now you me might remember in our RAM tutorial, I kept it in this world for this, that reason, we used uh, these things, uh, these D flip-flops. I could have used one wide ones, but I like these ones because they're nice and stubby. But in the s sake of, for the sake of uh, shift registers, um, these ones are, I guess, more useful in this circumstance. And, yeah, so, yeah, once I, I was showing you how to make it, <laughs> back to it. Now, this blue line represents the clock. So, as you can see on the bottom there, I've got a clock line, and I've got one for the reset as well. So, I'll be using blue for both of those, so don't be confused. Now, from here, we want to build two across, one up, and so, like, two, then three, one on top of there, break that block, one on top of there, across, across, <laughs> and like so. So it's a weird looking squiggle thing, similar to the um, <laughs> that logo thing in the start of um, Minecraft. <laughs> a few torches here, I'm not going to say here, 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 and here anymore, because <laughs> I got pulled up on it last time. <laughs> um, but yeah, four torches, oh no, sorry, one there too. So five torches, piece of redstone there, here, and here. So that's our uh, D flip-flop. Now we have two inputs to the D flip-flop, both of them are on the same side. This one is data, and we have data coming in straight. So like, imagine if we had a 4-bit binary input, I'll put uh, more lines in as well. They would all come in here, but as well as that, they would. Um, these lines are also for the shifting of the numbers, of the digits. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Let's um let's store a couple of values. Let's put a value here. Uh, did that? No, it didn't store. How am I going to store that? I'll go here. There we go. <laughs> I found it's Achilles heel. And break that one. So we've got two values stored now. And so when, for example, imagine those were that was the input. So that would be coming in, it would be the opposite, so we'll read it from left to right, only because these are the opposite of what the input would have been, uh, so that would be 1010, zero, zero. so when we pull this lever, the 1010 zero, zero will continue to shift out until it's, um, it's uh, serialed out, but in the, because we have the loop function, it will continue to loop. <laughs> I can remove that loop function if we want to, actually yeah, I'll show you the, the phase out thing I, I keep talking about, I'll break that. And that will stop it from phasing, uh, that will make it phase out. So we press that, and it will just phase out. 
And it won't come back. Hey, Jack. <laughs> I was almost going to paraphrase this song, but I decided not to because we're talking, we were talking about music before and I said I wouldn't, so... <laughs> anyway, moving on. So these are our D flip-flop inputs. The clock and the top need to be on at the same time for um, the values to be stored. The clock is a very essential part of the system. Uh, these are our inputs, like I said. And back here, as you noticed, they're at varying lengths. Now, if I didn't have the uh, the repeat system here, I would end it here. So it'd be like 4343 three, instead of 4345. Four, <laughs> so I'll show you what it looks like um, without the repeat. But yeah, this is our D flip-flop. Um, and to, to send the value to the next line, which is what we want, uh, we go like this. So we'll go with 3 on this one, put a repeater there so it doesn't um, override. Then put 2 ticks on there to keep up with that. Put a torch on there and some redstone. So now the next input coming from, uh, the next time uh, the registers or the clocks tick, um, <laughs> this will go to the next value. And yeah, so let's move on. So then, yeah, let's make another one just so you can see this in action. And I'll show you how to make all the other stuff. Like I said, th this tutorial has been done before, but I'm trying to make it a simplified version of the one that was made, which is the goal of uh, this series. Um, see that one coming in from a different input, from, from the input, I should say. Um, so it's a little bit different. Another torch there. Some torches here, <laughs> I'm doing it again, here, 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 and here. As well as a couple of pieces of redstone here and here. And that's that's it, it's a really simple D flip-flop design. Now I won't make any more just because you, you probably get the idea by now. And I don't really, I want to show you the other stuff without spending hours uh, <laughs> on the same thing. Now we want to make a monostable circuit now. Um, to be able to store the values. Now note, when you want to store a binary input, you want the clock to trigger at the same time. So you want some way of um, of turning on the clock, or unless you have the clock already running the whole time, it all depends on how you're going to run it. But it's um, the clock part is very essential to being able to store values. This button here only works because this connects to the monostable circuit, which sends out a pulse. So we'll put in our repeaters, one on four ticks, or one on one. As long as you have five ticks, it doesn't matter which is on whatever's on what delay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you could have one on th uh, three, one on two, uh, whatever, as long as they're on uh, five ticks. So that's our monostable circuit. For those who aren't, don't know monostable circuits, uh, or what they mean, or what they are, Monostable circuit pretty much lim turns the 9-tick pulse, which is what a button sends, in, or any, even a lever pu uh, pull, into a five or into a shorter pulse, a lot shorter. Um, let's have a look at that real quick. Once again, as you can see, it's a lot quicker. Now, normal button push, which is what we look at right here, we'll put them in uh, parallel. So this turned on obviously beforehand because there was repeaters and it turned off afterwards. So, oops, the freak just happened. So the pulse on a button is much longer than that on a monostable circuit. And based on the timing and such of this D flip flop, that's what's not needed. You need some kind of um, monostable circuit. And this is probably the most common one uh, that's out there. Sometimes you see them shorter, so you might see like one of these repeaters gone, but it all depends on the circuit that you're working with. Now this clock is the next important factor. Once again, I'll try to be brief. I'm trying. <laughs> A couple of repeaters here and here. And before I continue, I'll turn it off. And then a piece of redstone there. Now the delays on these, you want this one on three, this one on two, and I think it's three, two again. Yep. 3232. Two, three, two. 
and that's it. That's our clock, and we're good to go. So the clock's moving, but there's no value stored. So um, the clock here, let me, uh, to, to paraphrase and to return to an early tutorial, the clock basically connects to what this would be. This line here is where the clock is connected to. So if there's no values to be stored, which is what that uh, top line is, um, this value here, these, whatever's, um, the clock won't do anything. So like if I pull the clock, nothing will happen because there's nothing to store. See what I mean? Now the last thing I want to talk about is the reset line. Now because um, because this D flip flop works off of a a cascading or moving um, signal, the the D flip flop, although it's resetting itself, um, doesn't always necessarily reset everything all at once. So like, what I mean by that is like we'll press we'll, let's press this and, and we'll um, press it again. As you can see, we sent another value in here, but the value that was there is now there. So let's press, for example, here. Um, every time they move, that means that one in there is resetting. But if we were to stop using it all of a sudden, um, how would, and especially if there's a loop like I've added, there does, usually isn't unless you're making some kind of um, cursor moving on a screen or something, in which case a loop function would be pretty handy. But if you're not doing that, a reset line would be very handy to be able to reset whatever stored in the um, the registry because it is a shift register. Um, it holds on to the value in the next line across, or if it's a bi-directional one, in the the one off the other side. But doesn't matter whatever direction you're moving in. So let me just. Uh, it's a really simple um, thing to do, but very important. And um, you can have this set up as just an um, inverted thing that turns on when you turn off the system or whatever, depending on how you want to use the function. There are plenty of ways to do it. Uh, with the one I made on the other side, I'll show you in just two seconds. Uh, I could have just connected there to there, but I originally had it set up on this side. As you can see, I've got a button there and there, and I was testing it on this side, but then I just kind of sent a, a wire down there. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's um, but that's the long and short of of the reset line. It's <laughs> very simple, and um, so once again, like if we were to <laughs> store a value, and as you can probably guess already, it resets it pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I appreciate all your support. Hope you've uh, understood shift registers a little bit better now. And uh, next time, I'll try and make uh, two directional shift registers. Uh, I don't. They're fairly similar to, they're going to use the same uh, D flip-flop design as these ones, um, just letting you guys know, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, um, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, whatever, and I'll catch you later. See ya. Got a little Swedish there. there. Yeah.